Hey Taurus, welcome to your weekly forecast for November 14th through the 20th. This is for Taurus Sun, Moon, and Rising. Uh, now you might stumble upon this video like way, way later in the future. That's fine. You're going to see it whenever you're meant to hear the messages. Keep in mind, this is a general reading for the collective. Therefore, not every single message is going to resonate and that's okay. Take what does, leave what doesn't. And without further ado... My dears and my darlings, we'll check in here and see what is coming up for Taurus Sun, Taurus Moon, and Taurus Rising. Move you just a bit closer. First card here for the Taurus Collective is the Chariot. This is a major arcana card. Major arcana cards are going to come up anytime we're coming into a significant new chapter, a defining moment. So this is big energy. That's not going to be um, like uh, just for seven days. But things could be happening in the next seven days that are setting a period of time in motion for you that could go over the next few months. Now, chariot card can be cancer energy. Some of you could be dealing with a cancer, sun, moon, rising, or Venus. If you have cancer placements, there could be big changes or big shifts happening for you in those houses or in those areas of your life. The chariot card is a lot to do with movement, independence, uh, decision making. Some of you have heard me say when this card comes up that it makes me think of the quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson when he said, once we make a decision, the universe conspires to make it happen. And so sometimes this card comes up when we're waiting for some kind of a sign. We're like, okay, angels, okay, guides, open the door you want me to go through. And so you may be feeling like there's a big change coming. You may be feeling like you're about to do something really big in your life or you're, you're about to have a really big change and you're just waiting uh, for it to be shown to you. You're just waiting for, for the door to be revealed to you. But this card, a lot of the times in my readings, comes up when the thing that you're supposed to learn right now is free will. That you have free will. You get to decide. It is true that there are some things that are destined. And it is true that there are some situations where our will gets overridden, overrided, you know? And there may be some kind of divine intervention where we're redirected or where we're, uh, you know, uh, guided to a certain direction. But in this time, in this situation, your angels and guides don't have permission to choose the door for you. They can help you get the door open and walk through the door once you make the decision. Now, I feel for some of you, there's a door that's opening so there is a door that's popping open. You might not be expecting this door to pop open, but it's popping open. And you might be saying, what do I do? Am I supposed to do this? Is this what I'm supposed to do? And I'm getting the feeling in the sense that this is a choose your own adventure kind of situation. There is no supposed to. So it's not like this is a test where if you walk through this door, oh, you chose the wrong door. Now there's going to be a negative consequence. No, it's do you want to go this way or do you want to go that way? And the whole lesson here is that you have the freedom of choice. You get to choose. You get to decide in this instance. Do I want my life in this direction or do I want my life in that direction? And this is the lesson here. Maybe you grew up where it's been like, you know, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. You get what you get and you don't get upset, right? You just take it and you smile and you say thank you and you're uh, grateful for it. And maybe in this lifetime, you've gone through a lot of uh, redirection, a lot of uh, humbling, a lot of like, okay, I guess I'm not in control in this situation, but now you're coming into a time where you get to choose, you get to decide. And so when this door pops open, there is no should I or shouldn't I. It's what do you want to do? Does this door look good to you? Does the scenery 
uh, look good to you as you're peeking through the store, as you're, as you're uh, seeing what's, what's ahead if you walk through it. Does it look good to you? Is it something you want or do you want something else? Almost like a buffet scenario. Uh, those of you who watch my readings, you've heard me talk about um, sometimes the lover's card comes up for me where we need to decide what we want and we don't know what we want. So our angels and guides kind of take us to the buffet. Do you like this? Do you like that? Do you, you know, uh, to help you kind of pinpoint what exactly you want or what you want them to bring you? Because sometimes we're not being specific. But in this instance, it's kind of like, okay, the store is open. Does this look good to you or do you want to go down a different door? The next card that's coming up here for the Taurus Collective. <laughs> Holy cannoli, Taurus. It's you. Now we have major arcana cards coming in back to back. Major arcana cards coming in back to back is big changes in a short period of time. Things happening very quickly that are breaking you out of past life contracts, past life agreements, old karma. This is very much new energy, okay? Uh, very much new ever energy. Um, and so I feel here with this Taurus card, it's very exciting because some of you who watch my readings, you've heard me say, when I'm reading for you and your major arcana card comes up, um, there could be a situation here where um, it's directly connecting you to your power, your authenticity, um, and, uh, you know, living your best life unapologetically, uh, and just being yourself, being in your confidence, loving all of yourself. Now, if you're not a Taurus sun, if you're Taurus moon, Taurus rising, maybe you're watching this as a Taurus Venus, um, I feel it would be you getting really confident and accepting and embracing that aspect of yourself or, or yourself in that element of life, getting comfortable in that area or element of your life and being confident in it. Now, Taurus, coming into your power, coming into your authenticity, um, you're making decisions here and you're making the decisions that honor you, that honor the authentic you. And so you're coming into that faith-based decision, not the fear-based decision. There could even be commitment here for some of you. The Hierophant is sometimes seen as marriage, a promise, an agreement. So there could be something here. Maybe some of you are coming into a uh, marriage or agreement or commitment with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. Um, or you may be moving towards a commitment. And this commitment might be bringing you uh, physical movement. Sometimes there's physical movement and physical travel with the Chariot card. So for some of you, maybe all of the above. But major arcana cards back to back is big changes in a short period of time. Again, even though these are major arcana cards and major arcana cards can indicate that we're being directed because the chariot is here, it is a lesson in free will. So it's kind of like, do I want this or do I not want this? Now, having the Hierophant come in with it makes me feel like you do want this. This is the true self. This is what you really want, but it might be very different from what you've been conditioned to go after. And that, and therein lies the struggle. Therein might be where the issue is for you, where you're doubting going through this store, because it might be very different from what you were taught is going to make you happy. Or, you know, when you grow up, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. You're going to have a good life. You're going to be happy. And it might be very different from what was presented to you. But at the same time, because the Hierophant is here, I feel like this door opening honors the true self. So it's, do you want it or not? It's, it's up to you. It's your call. Now, the next card here is the Seven of Pentacles. And Seven of Pentacles can be working very hard. And, uh, you know, this card comes up to give us confirmation or reassurance that your hard work is going to pay off. There's going to be a harvest but it's going to take time. And so it's not going to be very wise to like overwork the situation or, oh, I'm going to hustle. I'm going to grind. I'm going to obsess about this. It's just plant the seeds, water them, tend to them, let time and physics do the rest. Let nature do the rest. 
you're not going to get faster results by nitpicking at it or analyzing it or constantly talking about it or constantly working it. It's not going to make things progress any faster. So it's just kind of just do the work, be invested and 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 let things grow, let things uh produce. It will give you a uh, harvest. It will be a happy outcome. Something about the 7 of pentacles however does make me feel and I don't typically get this feeling here um in this card. Um but something about the 7 of pentacles is giving me a feeling or sense of like literally being in the field or like literally planting or growing so for some of you there could be an opportunity coming up to uh connect with nature more maybe there's an opportunity for you to uh, move or to purchase land or something or to move um or to be involved in in like really connecting with the earth uh in a sense of uh planting and growing uh, maybe some of you are moving out to the country. Maybe some of you are uh, manifesting some goals here around uh, living more self-sufficiently or living off the grid. Um, but there is a sense or feeling here of like physically working the earth. And it might be overwhelming. And you might think, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be any good at this. You know, but you kind of don't have to be in, in some regard. Yes, there's things you're going to learn. There's things that are trial and error, but nature is so powerful, right? Nature wants to live. Nature wants to thrive. Even living in the city, every so often we'll see little flowers that have pushed out of the uh, cracks in the concrete and are in, in our growing. Like nature wants to live nature wants to produce uh so the nature of nature is abundance so yes there may be trial and error but i feel like the seven of pentacles is saying like you're gonna find that you can uh have a green thumb or you can grow or you can uh produce but specifically i feel around like food like producing food some of you might be also getting into like more holistic um, therapies or remedies maybe you're growing certain plants as medicine as supplements um, uh, plants or herbs so a sense here of um, like physically growing things again not typically the message or the vibe I feel around the seven of pentacles but for some reason I'm feeling that Taurus now look at this your next card here is the nine of cups and Nine of Cups is wishes coming true. Uh, Nine of Cups is like you're getting what you wanted. You're getting what you hoped for. And Nine of Cups is like you're happy and your hard work is paying off. And this is like the fruits of your labor. So I feel this door that's popping open for a lot of you Taurus is directly connected to work you've been doing on yourself in terms of healing, blockage removal, you know, kind of changing the narrative in your head, uh, changing the narrative that maybe has been passed down to you through uh, family, through previous generations where you're like, oh, look, all that smoke coming up and giving us confirmation. Um, you know, the narrative that's been passed down through family where you're like, you know what, that's not going to be my narrative. That's not going to be my outcome. That's not going to be how I'm going to live. And so I feel this, this, these changes that you've been making, this door popping open is a manifestation. This door popping open is a direct result or um, what you've been wanting or wishing for yourself in terms of something different, a different life, a different outcome um, kind of energy here. And so I feel here, uh, also we have to keep in mind with the Nine of Cups, it might be a wish coming true for us, um, but it is also, um, you know, sometimes with the Nine of Cups, people look at us with envy or they think we're being selfish or they think we're being greedy. And so, yes, this door is opening. Yes, you're going to be walking through this door, but Nine of Cups kind of comes in with some homework for me and my readings. And the homework is this. You have to remind yourself that you deserve this. You have to remind yourself that you have worked hard for this and that you have the right to receive. You kind of have to get into a healthy sense of entitlement. 
Like, I deserve to have this. I deserve to be happy. I'm not going to let other people ruin it for me. I'm not going to let other people make me feel bad about it. And I'm going to live my life. And I'm going to do my thing. And I'm going to be happy about what's come in for me. There could also be, like, people looking at you like you have to give to them. Like, oh, well, you have this really good thing coming in or things are going well for you. So you should take care of me or you should take me along with you. And eh, no, uh, sometimes the nine of cups is we have to know we can be generous or we can be giving, but we get to choose when we're being generous. We get to choose when we're being giving and uh, you know, maybe people didn't help you and they weren't there for you and they didn't have your back. And now that things are going good, they just want to come and like hit, hit your ride along with you. And so you may have to say no. For some of you, there could be a physically, literally an opportunity to move. And it sounds like a great situation where you're going to be connecting with nature and getting grounded and uh, living more holistically. And there could be someone or people in your life who are like, I want to come or, you know, take me with you. And you might be like, sorry, no, I, I can't. Or um, the invitation was just for me, you know, or whatever it might be. So there could be something here where... Um, uh, somebody's making you feel bad or somebody's making you feel like you're being selfish or greedy or keeping it all to yourself. But this is a direct manifestation of your work. So don't feel bad about it. You might want to check out your moon sign, your rising sign. Some weeks, your moon sign or rising sign might resonate more than your sun sign. You may need a private reading, which I'm more than happy to do for you. The link for the playlist to see the other videos is in the description of the video. And the link to schedule a private reading with me is also in the description of the video. So the link will take you to calendly.com slash amethystangelite and you can schedule a private reading with me there. I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I hope you all have a fabulous week ahead. Take care and be well, my darlings.